Today I'd like to look at a nice continued fraction formula which is due to Euler. And so what it says is that this sum of like increasing products, so we've got a0 plus a0 times a1 plus a0 times a1 times a2 all the way up to a0 times a1 all the way up to a n. So here we've got a product of n plus one terms. So that can be expressed as the following continued fraction. And it's a finite continued fraction. So here we've got a0 over one minus a1 over one plus a1 minus a2 over, and then you can see the pattern like continuing. And it'll end down here at this step where we have a n minus one over one plus a n minus one minus a n over one plus a n. And this sum continues via a limit to an infinite series on the left hand side and an infinitely deep continued fraction on the right hand side. And we'll actually use that to find a continued fraction representation of E a bit later. But what I'd first like to do is do a short case of this formula. Let's say we just go up to a depth of two. So here we'll have a zero over, let's see, it'll be one minus a one over one plus a one minus a two over one plus a two. So we've got something like that. And now let's simplify that just a little bit at a time until we hopefully get these first three terms. So the first thing that I'll do is I'll take this denominator right here and I'll multiply it by one plus a two to clear the denominator within the denominator. But in order to do that, I need to multiply this by one plus a two as well. So let's see what that leaves me with. So I still have a zero on top of everything, but now this will be one minus. So now I'll have a one plus a one times a two over, let's see, multiplying this one plus a two through to this one plus a one will leave us with one plus a one plus a two plus a one times a two. And then we have to subtract off, well, simply a two. So we're left with something like that. Okay, nice. But now let's see what simplification we can do here. We can take this a2 and cancel it with this a2. And then perhaps we'd like to do one more thing as well. And that is maybe we'll add one here in the numerator. Maybe we'll add one here in the numerator and also subtract one. And you might ask, well, what's the motivation for that? Well, that's to build this numerator until it looks like what's left over there. Okay, so let's see how this might simplify. So we still have a zero on top of everything and then we have one minus, well, let's see, this stuff that I'm putting blue parentheses around will cancel with this denominator down to one. Because notice that what's in blue parentheses is exactly what's in the denominator. So that'll be one minus one. And then we'll have minus negative one over that denominator, but that's simply plus one over that denominator. So one plus a one plus a one times a two. Oh, but now we can see it's all about to happen. We've got one minus one, and then we'll flip this fraction up to a reciprocal to multiply into what we have right here, leaving us with exactly what we want. So we've got a zero, plus a zero times a one, plus a zero times a one times a two. So there we saw it happen. So now I'd like to do a bit of an inductive argument as to why this holds in general. Okay, so now let's look at why this works a little bit more generally. So I'll start with the right hand side and manipulate it until it looks like this left hand side. And like we pointed out before, we'll do this via an inductive argument. So I won't go through all of the steps carefully of proving a base case, which is essentially what we did on the last board, or making an induction hypothesis, but we will verbally state what that is. Okay, so let's take this right hand side and look for a smaller version of the formula within the right hand side. And the way to get at that will simply be to switch the addition here of one and a one. So let's do that. I think we can do that and everyone will agree that that doesn't change anything. So here we have a one 
plus one. Okay, nice. And then I'm gonna put like a little blue dotted box. Well, it's not really a box, but a little blue dotted outline of a bunch of stuff here. Great. And then maybe I'll call this stuff in the blue dotted outline X. So here I'll just say X is equal to all of this stuff in blue. But now let's see what we have. We can write the right hand side in terms of that X. So in fact, we'll have the right hand side is equal to, let's see, we'll have A0 over one minus A1 over A1 plus, well, everything left over after that is that blue X. Okay, nice. But now let's see if we can simplify this a little bit and we can fairly easily. Let's take the numerator and the denominator and multiply them by a1 plus x. So there I'm doing a1 plus x in both the numerator as well as the denominator. Okay, so let's see, see what that leaves me with. I'll have a0 times x, that's happening in the numerator, and then plus a0 times a1. Okay, so there's my numerator. And then my denominator will be, will be a1 plus x. So that's from this a1 plus x moving over to this one and then minus a1. So that would be this multiplying into the fraction right there. Okay, nice. But now let's see how that simplifies. You can probably see that it'll simplify nicely. We've got this a1 and this a1 will cancel. And then we'll be left with a0 times x over x, so that's simply a0. And then next we'll be left with a0 times a1 over x. Well, I'm gonna write that as plus a0 times a1 times one over x. And now let's see if we can figure out what one over x is. But I think we can figure out that pretty easily by just writing out what one over x is over here. So let's see, one over x will be one over one minus a2 over one plus a2 minus a3, and then so on and so forth. Oh, but that's exactly a smaller version of the formula we're trying to prove. So if we had made a careful induction hypothesis, this is where we would apply it. We would have assumed that this sort of formula holds for smaller versions of this formula. And well, let's apply it to this. So this will end down here at this a n over one plus a n term. And notice it kind of starts with the number one and then the next number is a two. So here this looks like one plus a two plus a two times a three all the way up to a2 multiplied up to a n. So that's one over x. But now let's put this expression for one over x over here and we'll see that we have exactly what we want. So we have a0 plus a0 times a1 times one plus a0 times a1 times a2, that would be like this term, plus, well, the next one will be a0 a1 times a2 times a3 and then ending way over here at a0 times a1 multiplied all the way up to a n. So there we have it. We started with the right hand side and using an inductive argument, using a smaller case, we have built this towards the left hand side, thus establishing this formula. Okay, let's look at a nice application. So like we said before, our application will be to find a formula for Euler's constant, but we can actually do better we can find a formula for the function e to the x. So let's write this out via its power series expansion. This is one plus x plus one over two factorial times x squared plus one over three factorial times x cubed plus one over four factorial times x to the fourth and so on and so forth. But we wanna write this in a way so that each subsequent term is a product of a new thing as well as the previous terms. But that's not too hard to do with factorials. Notice that we could write this as one plus x and really view this x as one times x and then plus x times one half x. So that's pretty clearly that and then plus x times one half x times one third x so see, the next term is the previous term multiplied by something obvious. 
And then here we have plus x times one half x times one third x times one quarter x, and then so on and so forth. And of course this converges, so we can take the limit of both sides of Euler's formula to produce that infinitely deep continued fraction. Okay, so now let's apply the rule that we had to rewrite this as our continued fraction. So we've got one over, so we'll have one minus x over, and then one plus x minus one half x over, one plus half x minus one third x over one plus one third x minus so on and so forth. So I think you can see the pattern there. But I think it might look nicer if we clear denominators along the way. And we can do that by, for instance, multiplying this fraction by two over two and then continue doing that all the way down. So that'll leave us with something like this. So we'll have one over, so it'll be one minus x over, and then, and then one plus x minus x over two plus x minus x over three plus x minus x over four plus x, and so on and so forth. So now we've got this nice pattern. Notice that all of the numerators are x, like after that first step. And then the first part of the denominators are being built. One plus x, two plus x, three plus x, four plus x, so on and so forth. Okay, so now maybe for the final result, let's set x equal to one and notice that we get the nice formula for e. So we'll have e is expressed as one over, let's see, we've got one minus one over two, minus one over three minus one over four minus one over five minus and so on and so forth. And I think that's got a real nice shape to it. But of course the power of Euler's original formula is not just to find the continued fraction representation of E, but you could really do it for a number of different functions. So perhaps you might wanna try it with the series expansion of the natural log of one plus X. Let's recall that that has a series expansion as the sum is n goes from one to infinity, minus one to the n plus one over n times x to the n. And I think using the same kind of methods that we did over here, maybe breaking up the, breaking up each subsequent term into the previous term multiplied by something will give you a clear path to using this nice formula of Euler. And that's a good place to stop. Thanks for watching and sticking around until the end of the video. And since you're here, don't forget to gently press that like button. Subscribe, ring the bell, and select all notifications to never miss a video. If you want to get your name in the credits like you see here, access the live seminar series, review videos before release, and more, go to patreon.com slash michaelpenmath and become a Patreon member today. If you want full ad-free course content, subscribe to my second channel, Math Major. I've got courses on linear algebra, complex analysis, and proof writing, among several others. And that's everything. Bye.